nice to start our meetings on time and hopefully end on time or early if possible. So why don't we uh, call the September Transportation Advisory Board meeting to order and start off with our roll call. Neil Lurie. Present. Courtney Michelle. Present. Jacques Livingston. Here. Sandra Stewart. Present. Liz Osborne. Here. Did you not hear me? I'm here. Yes, I'm sorry. Um, Joe Long. David Droge. Council Member Peck. All right, thank you very much. So we'll start off with uh, um, uh, approving the uh, the meeting minutes. Uh, any comments from um, uh, on the meeting minutes as we go forward? All right. Um, there was actually just one uh, very um, minor comment I had there, and this is so minor there, but there was a misspelling of my, my first name in uh, the meeting minutes. Uh, uh, N-E-A-L is, um, is the, the correct spelling there. So not a big deal, but um, other than that, I thought they looked pretty good. Uh, Sandy? Well, now that you said that, my last name was spelled incorrectly one of, in one of the spots. They, they spelled it <laughs> Stewart instead of Stewart. So no big deal, but I was going to let it ride, but you pointed that out. So, <laughs> okay, thanks. We'll get that. No big deal, but it's part of, the official, part of the official record, so nice for us to do our part to make it as accurate as possible. Thanks. Okay, any other tweaks on that one? All right, do we have a motion to approve the minutes with those two updates? All right, Sandy, you wanna make a motion? I move that we approve the minutes from the tab meeting minutes from um, August, um, I don't remember, August 10th, 2020. I second that. Sounds good. And uh, I, uh, Sandy, just to confirm, does that motion include the uh, the two updates there that were previously uh, uh, forementioned? Yes, with the two corrections with Neil's spelling and, and Stuart's last name spelling. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Uh, so Sandy motion there, uh, uh, Liz with uh, the second. Um, any last comments? All right. All in favor, raise your hand. Any opposing? Um, and uh, uh, since we have Courtney on the phone there, Courtney, are, are you in favor of uh, approving the minutes? Yes, I am in favor. Okay, sounds good. Anybody opposing? All right, consider the minutes approved. Um, why don't we go to communication from staff? All right, I'm gonna hand it over to Jim. Jim's got some CIP updates. For you guys. So, Jim. Thank you, Tyler. Well, I just wanted to provide um, the, the board with uh, some quick updates on what we are currently working on on CIP. Um, Chairman Lurie, board members, um, we had talked last week about uh, our CIP for next year. But, um, and last year we talked about this year. So I just wanna, with some new board members, give you a, some quick updates um, regarding some of the projects that are currently underway um, and some of the ones we've, we've accomplished earlier this year. I think the biggest one we, we saw was we had installed a signal, a traffic signal at, at Mountain View and Alpine, which uh, was, was critical um, to have done before the start of school. And lo and behold, uh, the kids aren't out there walking every day, but, but we did meet our goal for that. Um, one of the projects also that we've recently completed, uh, and while it's not necessarily a transportation project, it is transportation related. We had recently completed a, a project on 17th that was a drainage project. 
um, ran from um, part of 17th and then up Main Street. It also got confused with a, a, Cal or a CDOT project that uh, installed some medians on Main Street. Uh, that was completed earlier in the summer. Um, currently, projects we currently have underway are, are, are Pike Road. Um, involves widening to add additional buffered bike lanes, uh, a traffic signal at Kaufman, and um, goes from Sunset to Main Street in conjunction with a CDOT project that is uh, adding another lane uh, north northbound for a left turn. Uh, that project is about 80% complete, so we're wrapping that up. We should be done in a few more months. Uh, we'll see the signal um, be in operation in about 30 days. So. That's kind of uh, that's moving along. Um, we also are have been working on as part of our our payment management program this year on some improvements on Ninth Avenue from Hover to uh, Airport. Uh, those um, the the Ninth Avenue road in that section was pretty pretty bad, pretty beat up. So we took the opportunity as part of our payment management program to widen that road out a little bit more, add bike lanes in. Uh, portions of them were buffered, but that's just, that is wrapping up as well. Um, I think it's open now, but there's still some some striping work that's underway. Uh, the last project, I just want to provide a quick update that we started about 30 days ago is County Line Road. Um, that is running from um, where the existing Spring Gulch 2 project, uh, just north of 9th is, where you see those big box culverts, uh, and it moves north to just north of 17th. We'll widen out for a third lane adding in bike lanes and adding in some, some multimodal improvements and sidewalk. Uh, that is just getting started. Uh, so that will be moving along probably mostly into next year. Uh, we had to relocate a water line just recently. So that is moving along. That's kind of our transportation stuff for the year. Um, one other thing to add, we have been working on spring gulch number two, uh, which involves some drainage improvements and a trail, including an underpass under County Line Road. So that is wrapping up. Um, they will be done hopefully by the end of this year with most of the major improvements, and then it'll just finalize into the spring with some planting uh, to catch up on all the landscaping. So I just want to provide you a quick update, you know, so you're aware of what's going on around around the city. Those are our big, big, big projects we have going um, that are transportation related. So if you have any questions, here the rest of the meeting. So um, I'll turn it back over to Tyler. So there's one other thing I'll talk about, and I think you've probably had a chance to see it at this point, but on Main Street, we've had for a while uh, trying to support some of the local businesses down there on Main Street with additional seating area that they can sell product on. Uh, mixed, most, mostly positive feedback on that. I think largely that was the, what we heard was that it was a positive impact on those businesses. Right now, we're expecting that those barricades would be picked up and out moved out by about the end of this month. October 5th is really the day we're looking at having all those barricades picked up. So if you want to get out there and check it out before it's gone, while we're still down to one lane on Main Street, I encourage you all to, to get out there and try and check it out at this point. But that's all I have to add on that. Sounds good. Sandy? Is there any way that um, you would find out or know that perhaps they might extend that period of time for the restaurants outdoors? Because they still tell us that it's not good to dine inside and whether it could be good through the month of October. So we've had a lot of those discussions with the LDA mm -hmm. to try and get the, the pulse on that. Is that something the LDDA and the downtown restaurants are wanting to pursue? Based on what we've heard so far, that's not something that they want to continue with at this point. Okay. We, will, we will still be able to use the avenues. For example, I think the, the business on the southeast corner of 6th and Main, the, uh, the Pump House Red Zone, they're going to continue using that park on the south side of 6th that's in the right-of-way. Mm -hmm. will be available, and then we're also talking about more utilization of the alleys to provide some of that space that, for the door seating. Okay. All right. Thank you. Great. Any other follow-up questions from uh, any board members? Yeah, Jacques. Yeah. Um, just want to say that that signal at Mountain View and Alpine works like a champ. Works great. And even though the kids aren't in school, I just wanted to pass on that I have heard several positive comments from school staff that are very happy uh, that it's there. 
So I just wanted to pass it on that it's being appreciated. Awesome, thanks. And Courtney, it looked like you had an extra comment as well. Oh, you're on mute there, Courtney. Is that better? Yep. Okay, um, back to the barriers. Uh, next week starts restaurant week uh, in conjunction with the chamber and local restaurants and LDDA. So uh, along with Tyler, I encourage you to go out and support those restaurants downtown when while they're still available to have the outside seating there. Awesome, thanks. Any other comments? All right, only thing that I will add is, um, I think it's been fantastic being able to to do this this pilot, this test of, of Main Street to see, um, you know, how we can support some of the local businesses during this very, very challenging time for, for the whole community. So um, huge thanks for the creative uh, collaboration and being able to make that possible. And I, I think Tyler, when, when last uh, uh, we spoke, I think uh, you mentioned that the transportation impacts were, were pretty modest in the grand scope of things there with an additional month of uh, under your belt. Is that indeed still the case or have you seen big uh, uh, changes since last we spoke? So Neil, still still some work to do on the, the quantification of all the changes we saw. I think the initial shock that first week was probably the biggest biggest change we saw right off the bat. People going, okay, I need to find a new route. It seems that people adjusted relatively quickly and that we didn't continue seeing major issues on Main Street. I don't think um, over the duration of this, we saw any, the, one of the biggest areas we saw backups was northbound Main at 3rd Avenue, particularly in the PM Peak. And I don't think that got any worse as the duration went on. And I think, I don't know that it got any better, but it definitely did not continue to grow or get worse throughout the duration. I think that what we saw initially in that first couple of weeks in terms of additional time added to the trip between on Main Street from 1st to 9th stayed about the same. We weren't seeing a whole lot of additional delay or travel time in that section. Um, we were able to troubleshoot a couple of signal issues we were seeing. And so we actually made some improvements, I think, on our throughput on, on Main Street North South as well, along with, um, you know, one of the things that we did in the past with the when we switched from traditional signals to active signals, we sort of lost the ability to what we call float the walk, where you can parallel main, the walk light would just stay on and it would stay on indefinitely. You wouldn't have to push the button. Initially, when we installed the adaptive, we weren't able to do that, but that's something that we've really been working on to bring that back. And if you've noticed, it is working really well now on Main Street between 3rd and 9th Avenue, we were able to do that. So. One of the things that, for one reason or another, we were able to see some issues with this particular configuration and then troubleshoot them and make a couple of things work better. Great. Well done. Thank you. Awesome. We'll go uh, to the next section there for public inviting to be uh, invited to be heard. Do we have any members of the public who wish to be heard at this moment? Hearing none, we will move forward to our action items. 2020 model traffic codes, Tyler, it's all yours. All right, thanks. So as Neil mentioned, um, apologize for the size of this packet. It is a very large one. It's all of the model traffic code as unamended provided to, to you guys for reference. Model traffic code is developed by Colorado Department of Transportation. It is the real goal and purpose of that is to ensure uniformity throughout the state as we drive around and in general, the rules and the regulations are relatively consistent so that we all have a pretty good expectation of as drivers, bicyclists, walkers, what the expectations are of us. And ultimately the goal is that that is the safe, it promotes safety that we all kind of understand the rules. We're all playing by the same rules. We know how to react to these uh, different traffic control devices and regulations. The current version that we're on was adopted in 2010. It, there have been a handful of changes since 2010 that CDOT rolled out the 2020 traffic code this year to capture any state laws that have changed. In the meantime, it is largely the same as 2010. There's a handful of text updates for clarification and a couple of new sections. I think one thing to point out is, as we were going through this, we made, we 
did not at this point. We did not specifically exclude the scooters from operating on the street. Right now, we don't have scooters operating in Longmont. There is a potential for them to come to Longmont. I think that ultimately they may end up, a lot of several municipalities have written code to allow them and more or less require them to operate on the street, such as a bicycle would and not on the sidewalks. But I think that if and when we see that type of vehicle come to Longmont, we need to be ready to react to it. And we could do that a couple of ways. One, we can do it through the traffic code or two, we could do it through individual licenses with the scooter companies who come to town. But I think the key with the model traffic code was that we didn't include the use of that in the street was the really one of the big takeaways. Uh, municipal, municipalities have the ability to delete sections that are not applicable. And if you read through the proposed deletions that, that we've made in there, there's sections regarding to toll road violations or mountain driving, just a handful of sections that don't necessarily to apply to Longmont. So we scratch those, which is consistent with change amendments we've made in the past. We have some additional requirements on parking and some clarifications on left turns are some of the big ones. I think one of the ones that still surprises me is that the Colorado model traffic code doesn't have a clear definition of what you're supposed to do at a flashing yellow arrow. So that is one thing that we that our code does clarify, right? Provide some additional clarification on that. Um, with that said, this is something that municipalities need to adopt by ordinance or we intend to adopt by ordinance. So this will be going to council with the recommended changes as before you tonight. If you wish to discuss and recommend any additional changes, we can definitely see if we can what we can do with those changes, but ultimately it will go to council for an ordinance. Any any other questions on that? I don't have much more to talk about on that. If you have specific questions, I'm happy to ask, ask answer questions. I think, Sandy, I think Sandy was first there. Sandy, go, go for ahead. it. I just had one question in that, um, do or where do we have um, any parking meters in Longmont? I didn't know we had any. Sandy, right now we don't currently have any parking. Okay. There has been some discussion off and on about potentially having parking meters in the downtown area. There's no plans for them at this point, but they could still be applicable within the lifetime of this code. We could choose to exclude it at this point and amend the code to do it in the future, or we could leave it as is and we can, it, it will be ready for it if it happens. Well, see, I, I saw, thank you. I, I found it to be interesting that it started, what, in 1952 when they start, the state started doing this, and then it looked mm -hmm. like it did it every five years, and then there was a big, you know, space, maybe 10 years, and the last time it was updated, it showed it was 2018, even though we're still by the 2010 code. So what causes them to update the document? Generally, updates to the document are driven by change. So if there is a state law that is proposed, adds a new regulation, that would be something that this code would react to after the state okay. law. Okay. All right. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Great. Jack, I think you had a, a, a comment before. Yeah, just a question for you, Tyler. I noticed in your write-up here, you said most of these amendments are the same as what we already had with the 2010 code. I'm just wondering, is there anything new that you we have added as a city um, for this version of amendments? Uh, there is, let's see. There, in, in large part, there is nothing new there. It would be semantics. It's nothing particularly, no big new items that say, uh, all of a sudden, you can only drive on the other side of the road. There's there's not not any big substantial changes per se. There's just word text amendments that are relatively minor. Okay, great. Thank you. Great. And, and Tyler, just to clarify, are you, at this point, are you looking for uh, feedback on uh, some of the details, or are you going to run through uh, 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 in more detail first? So, so we're if you if you want to discuss, you're, you're free to discuss. Ultimately, we're asking for a recommendation. You can recommend presented. 
let this be adopted or you can recommend with changes. Okay, I had a couple clarifying questions, but see uh, uh, who else has comments first. All right, Liz, you wanna go for it? And don't forget to take yourself off mute. Sorry about that. I was able to figure out most of the deletions and where they were placed. I'm just curious about uh, speed racing, why that's deleted and what it was replaced with. So that would be, I think that was 110410F that was in place, said it was deleting it. Bear with me for one sec. And I, before I comment, let me find it here. So 11.05 is where the speed re regulations are. Is that, I think I heard 11.04, but 11.05 looks like where it's at. It was actually the deletion that is on page. It's the one at 11.04.010F, yeah, speed regulations. And it seemed to me that I, I could understand most of them, but why the speed racing one was deleted. I'm trying to remember which one, 11.05, or 8 that was. It was 11.05, but I might have been looking at the wrong thing, so never mind my question. That's okay. 11.05, 5, 6, 7, and 8. It was the sentencing. I get it. All the penalties were taken off. Once yeah, I thought the, about the, the, the penalty, the penalties are, are in our, our municipal code rather than the state penalties. Okay. Thank you. So Tyler, I had a couple, just uh, two quick questions for you. Uh, one, um, I don't really have a strong opinion, but I was just a little surprised. On, on page four, um, I guess it's PDF, uh, uh, page 14 of the PDF packet, uh, uh, page four of that, this particular section, um, line number 17, um, it's a section that talks about uh, traffic regulations generally amended there around motorized bicycles, animals, skis, toy vehicles, and et cetera. Mm -hmm. uh, there's reference on, on line 17 to, let me just look at my notes here. Uh, it is also lawful for any person upon roller skates, a skateboard, or riding in or by any means uh, to go on any roadway. I want to make sure I'm following this correctly. Is am I reading this correctly that 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 existing language in our existing ordinance is being is being uh, struck, or this language would be added uh, to our ordinances? So this is a modification. So the proposed amendment is section so 109, section nine of the model traffic code is being amended to say this. So this is what our local amendment was will say or would say if we approve it can you help me understand the rationale for why a child wouldn't be allowed to ride a skateboard on a residential local road really the i think the historically why that's been and and why we would continue encouraging that we're not playing in the street is really just for the safety aspect of not wanting to play in um, we, we do expect cars in the street. I think that any driver should be cautious and expect kids in the street, but it is um, not uncommon that it's deemed unlawful to do so. Okay, I'd be curious if other people have opinions on that. I, I don't have a strong opinion on it. I just, it kind of struck me as 
I'm not worried about the police handing out a bunch of tickets to kids, um, but I also <laughs> just want to be thoughtful for, since this is for the next 10 years. And, and, the, and the reality is, I, I don't, you mentioned, I don't think PD is out looking to write tickets to people on boards. It more comes into play if and when there's a crash. Right. Okay, the, the other question that I had was on um, page 11, I guess in the PDF packet it was page 21, but in the, our little set, this section it was uh, page 11. I'll just pull it up real fast. And uh, there's a section that talks about speed limits. And uh, I noticed that the, uh, the language is references, um, in no event will the uh, the speed be less than 25 miles per hour uh, on all streets in any district. I've noticed that a growing number of communities are starting to um, pilot and test 20 mile per hour speed limits in certain sections. Um, that may be an area that's a high crash area. Maybe it's an area that happens to coincide with, um, you know, where local businesses are 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 uh, you know, have. Um, you know, community interest in, in, in being able to, uh, to be, you know, with, with city approval, they're a little closer to the streets. Um, what options are there to, be able to amend that to 20 miles per hour rather than 25 miles per hour at the minimum so that the transportation team has a little bit more flexibility um, to look at the circumstances on their own merit? Definitely something we can take back to the legal team and see if, see if that's uh, an amendment we can make. Thank you. I think that would be uh, uh, worth looking into. All right, that's all for me. Any additional comments from any other board members? Yes, Andy? Well, I just uh, lived in this neighborhood, my neighborhood, for quite a while, and I remember back several years ago on Purdue Circle, we had kids riding their skateboards on the street, and there was a major crash, and a kid was killed. And and so I, I understand where you're coming from, um, Neil, about why can't they ride it in the streets, but... Uh, safety sake, uh, drivers don't expect to see kids, even though they're trying to slow down and do the 25 miles per hour. But after that, I just thought no kid should be in in the street with a skateboard and no driver wants to hit a kid and no family wants to lose their child. So I, I'm with the ordinance that we have. Okay. Thank Thanks. you. Thank you, Sandy. Any additional comments? Can you see my hand? Right. Um, oh, now I can see you. Hi, Courtney. Go for it. Uh, I just had two small, tiny things about uh, grammar in in the packet or in the on page in our packet, page twelve. It's uh, page. Let's see. Two in the packet, line five. It says three copies of the model traffic code adopted. The section is. And that should be R because it's referencing the three copies. And then on page, let's see, 16 in our packet, which is page six of the document line, oh, line eight, there's a my that should be a may, M-A-Y. So little things, but uh, going into the wall. Good eye for detail. That's so, it. Appreciate that, Courtney. Real quick, Neil, I think one thing, and talking about the 25 mile an hour, it doesn't explicitly say it can't be less than 25 as is. It says, except when special hazard exists that requires a lower speed, the following speed shall be lawful. So 25 is the has been our unposted prima facie speed limit, but it does looks like it does allow for some flexibility if you had a special hazard to require a lower speed limit. I can is there any legal team? But at this point, is there any definition of special hazard, or is that really at the discretion of the transportation team? Uh, that would largely be at the discretion of the transportation team. 
Okay. I just want to make sure that 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 we don't come back uh, three years from now and say, "Hey, the ordinance is very clear. We're not supposed to go less than twenty-five, and except in extraordinary circumstances." So, just want to make sure you have the flexibility that uh, that you need there, especially as we go forward, you know, uh, over the next ten years. Yeah, yeah Liz. I was just curious, it says, and I appreciate uh, Courtney pointing this out. It says that the three copies are filed with the city clerk. Kirk, are, is this, will, will this be available online for people to look at? Yes, so the okay. model traffic code is all available online through city long bonds municipal code. It's all online. Great. Any last comments? Great. Well, Tyler, I, I do think that as it relates to 20 mile per hour, if if you can at least double check with the legal team there just to see, uh, you know, what flexibility uh, uh, that they feel like we have there and, and if it be possible to be able to include that, that language in, in a way that would hopefully provide flexibility down the road. But, but beyond that, I didn't hear any additional uh, any material changes there other than uh, the items that were uh, raised so far and some of the grammatical updates there. Yes, Andy. Um, I just read a note that I wrote to self. Um, I'm just curious, uh, Tyler, is Longmont's modifications that we're making, are they similar to other modifications that other communities are making here in Boulder County? Do you know? Do you guys do any talking? Similar, I think. Um, I think I've talked with Fort Collins and looked at their amendments. I think they've definitely made some more amendments to specifically talk about scooters. That's one thing that I did notice. Boulder and Fort Collins have both had to adapt to that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Thank you. Great. So at this point, uh, Tyler, are you uh, seeking a motion of uh, 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 support for um, the uh, the proposed code as presented there with the modifications that have, have been discussed? Yep. Okay. Is there uh, I'd like to entertain a motion there as uh, as such? Uh, I move to uh, recommend these amendments with the said modifications. Um, trying to think if there's anything else I need to add in there. I, I guess with with the uh, additional comment to explore the 20 mile an hour um, provision that we talked about, that Neil brought forward. Okay. Thanks. Is there a, a second to the motion? All right. I heard. A, I saw. I saw a wave of a hand from Joe there for uh, uh, Sorry. I think that's sufficient. <laughs> Sounds good. Any comments before we uh, vote? Okay. All in favor of the motion, either uh, raise your hand or say aye. Okay. And, uh, and Courtney, um, Looks like your screen is off there. So, are are you an up or 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 or? All right, we'll do the other way there. Uh, um, okay, fair enough. Any opposing? Okay, the motion carries. Thank you, Tyler. Let's jump back to our agenda here, and I think that. We are up to uh, uh, any informational items there. Uh, Tyler or Phil, any additional informational items? No additional information items. I, I better speak unless it's uh, <laughs> unless, uh, yeah, if there's, there's, there's got to be a reason for, for me to be on the on the line today. Um, anyway, we just want to let you know, and now that uh, Council Member Peck is on the line too, I just wanted to let folks know that we do have uh, very strongly worded letters from uh, the mayor as part of the mayors and commissioners coalition. We have our Northwest Chamber 
um, that includes the Longmont Chamber. We have Boulder County all supporting um, RTD reading the Fast Track's internal savings account funds uh, for uh, you know bus projects. Sorry, there's lots of feedback, so I'm having a tough time. But um, there's there's been that call by this in, by most all elected officials here in the along the Northwest corridor and within the Northwest region to not raid that FISA, uh, again, Fast Track's internal savings account dollars that we've been saving for. And, it, you know, it's not going to cover the cost of rail uh, by any means, but it does provide a nice, uh, you know, matching dollars for future, you know, if there's any kind of future federal grants or state grants that we can go after, this provides some of that and, and gives us and lines us up to be uh, to go after some of those with matching dollars. So just wanted to let you know that that's been in the newspapers lately. I'm sure you've read about it. Uh, some strong words, obviously, from this community. So um, just wanted to let you know that was happening. And Councilmember Peck may have more to add in, during her time. Thank you. Oh, you're muted, Neil. All right. Um, just since we're on the uh, the topic there, Councilmember Peck, is there anything else for you to add on, on that particular topic? Thank you, and I apologize for being late. I, I got called out on something that I couldn't get away from. Um, thank you, Phil, for uh, telling me. I didn't realize that that was happening. I was actually going to ask Council tomorrow night if they would also uh, send a letter of, of support in keeping that FISA fund intact. So um, I think the more people that speak up, the better it is. At least put a hold on it until we get our new director um, and until we see if there's going to be any transportation funds coming down federally in January. I would hate to rob it and then find out we didn't really have to um, because there's not going to be any way we're going to get that back. So um, I agree with everything that you said, and I, I thank you. So. Um, Great. Um, so, much. so I do want to speak to something when it comes up to uh, comment, though. Sounds good. We'll come back to you in just a minute there. I want to make sure that from our agenda, we have a chance to uh, uh, give the board members a chance to uh, to comment, and then uh, we'll, we'll come right back to you. So no problem at all. Are there any comments from any uh, board members? We can just uh, go around here, starting with... Um, uh, Jacques, and and that will just go in the order that people just happen to appear on my screen. So, uh, Jacques, any comments uh, from your side? Uh, thank you, Neil. Um, a couple comments. So, on the north part of Main Street, probably let's see me is that section, and I can't remember exactly where the delineation is, but it's between that 17th and Highway 66 up there. I continue to see a need for those improvements that we've talked about in the past where people are crossing mid block and it looks like a very dangerous situation with four lanes. Um, so I just, that need is still there. It's still present. And, uh, you know, I hope at some point we can look at that more. I know it's, it's in the plan because I remember seeing it there. Um, I don't know how many dollars we have allocated to it, but uh, especially given the fact that one of the, buildings and housing right there is a retirement center. I see a lot of elderly um, slowly making their way across the street and um, I would hate for something to happen there. So I just wanted to bring that up. So thank you. Great, thanks. Awesome. Um, Joe, do you wanna go next? Any comments on your side? Really didn't have anything, believe it or not. Fair enough. All right, Liz, you're next on my screen here. Do you have any uh, uh, comments on your side? I didn't until I thought this morning about um, having seen a lot of people, and it's not really in our thing because it's um, Burlington Northern, but the railroad track crossing problems on 66 this morning caused a lot of frustration. I can imagine. Yeah, Tyler, do you want to comment on that? Yeah, so if I can jump in there real quick on that one. So a couple of things they've had, this is their second closure in the last couple of weeks for that same 
issue. They keep having panels that are breaking apart. It, I saw a picture of the one this morning. It looks like the panel literally exploded. There was rebar sticking out. All the concrete was busted out. The last time they came in to fix it was a temporary patch. They are planning a more permanent repair for the next couple of weeks into the month. They're waiting for permits from CDOT, but that will, we do anticipate that they're going to need to close the road for two full days to do the proper repair. So we've been working with both BNSF and CDOT on, on a detour route that's not through local streets. I mean, there, there will be some impact on some arterials in Longmont, but their initial traffic control plan was routing all traffic down Alpine and over to 21st. So nah, we're not going to put 25,000 cars from 66 through that neighborhood. Not not a good plan. So we're working with them to at least get that traffic on arterials instead. Um, but, but we do anticipate at the end of the month having another two full day closure to permanently repair that panel that keeps breaking apart. Thank you, Tyler. Great, thanks. Joe, looks like you have a, a follow on that. Just a question. Um, is that something that like a PSA or something can be communicated uh, to the community to, to help mitigate some of that detour requirement at all? So Joe, Joe when, it, when, it's a, when it's an emergency repair, unfortunately, we don't have the luxury of, of the PSA. I think through our channels, our, our public safety publish some information as possible. And we work with CDOT to get that information. It was on the message boards on 25 to at least provide what information we could as we get into the, the the planned closure. Absolutely, we'll do a, everything we can to get the word out to try and just to share the message that hey, this is going to be closed for two two days. Please plan accordingly. Excellent. Thanks. Sounds good. Thank you. All right, uh, next to my screen, I have uh, 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 Sandy and then Courtney Michelle. Sandy, any comments on your side? Yes, I um, I was at the Boulder County Local Coordinating Council meeting today, and somebody from the county spoke about um, they use streetlight data to gain um, data for transportation in the master plan for the county. Do we use anything like that to gain transportation data for Longmont, knowing how many cars come in from maybe Larimer County or Weld County, or maybe even coming from Boulder, mountains? I mean, I'd never heard of streetlight, and I, I was just curious what we used. So Phil may want to jump in on this one too, but we haven't, we have not used that currently, but it's something we talked about. It's this model and we've talked about getting a quote to see what that would cost us to have that information. There could absolutely be some value to that. We do have some other infrastructure in place to where um, we can share data with both Greeley and Loveland with some of the devices that they have at their traffic try and come up with a ballpark origin destination, but it's, it's limited to the communities that are using similar technology on that. So street light might be something that we look at next year and upcoming years, updating our comprehensive plan, something that maybe we're looking how we utilize that data a little better. Well, it just seems like we have lots of, as we are um, requesting, you know, um, transportation dollars for the, the quarter of the 119 quarter. If you have that kind of data knowing where people are or originating and passing through and going and ending up here, maybe we can work better together in, um, uh, I don't know, our transportation needs in requesting grants to help us do what we need to do. So I, I, I just found it to be interesting. Just thank you. Sandy, just as a follow up and as a as a heads up, just to let you know, we did use that county data uh -huh. for our build grant, which we're hopefully going to hear about tomorrow. Yes or no on the twenty six million dollar build grant? Uh, we're hoping to hear today, and I'm kind of wary. I'm kind of a little worried now that we're not hearing by today, but um, we should hear definitely by tomorrow whether we got the twenty six million dollars. But we used that county data, and they worked with us. We partnered with them on that data and we did some pretty interesting things with their contract with Streetlight and we're able to 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 kind of find out where people were coming from. We were able to show that 30% of the traffic 
Oh, well, it's, it's about 25 right now, but it's going to grow to 30% of that traffic on the diagonal. Mm -hmm. uh, it's going to be from Southwest Weld and from Larimer County. So uh, we know that, uh, that, you know, about a third of that traffic is from outside of Longmont, outside of Boulder County. So we were able to use some of that data. We also had them do some uh, things showing us how traffic moves through Longmont. Mm -hmm. Whereas, you know, we really showed a strong connection. We knew, we kind of knew this, but it was good to see it in data is that a lot of people coming from the north uh, utilize 66. And so that's why we're going after design dollars right now for State Highway 66 for that widening between Hover and Main Street. Right. Because we know, and we we know just by watching it and, and measuring the volumes, but the streetlight data really showed, you know, because it's based on people's cell phones and mm -hmm. the address. It doesn't know whose cell phone it is necessarily, but... Um, it does it does track a cell phone number or a serial number and so it can find out kind of how fast it's moving and where it's going we we're able to see a very strong connection of anybody coming down 287 or through on 66 using hover street to get to the diagonal and we saw some people using our airport kind of bypass or or mm -hmm. you know alternative route as well which was really uh, pleasant to see that as well and i don't know if tyler's talking much, but he also has a Wi-Fi tracking piece where he can actually watch, use the same kind of technology almost as streetlight data and kind of track, we can track serial numbers through points in town. It's not as, it's not as uh, comprehensive as that, but we're all trying to come together and partner with all this different data. So we're using it for these grants. Yeah, okay. That's what I wanted to hear. You'd be using it for grants. Good, good. Thank you. <laughs> Wait, Joe, do you have a follow-up question on that? Yeah, um, based on trace and track, regardless of technology, do you have or do we know there's public awareness um, in that that delves into privacy and a whole litany of other issues? So what is your question? Is it, do, do people know that this is happening? <laughs> Correct. Yeah, because it, yeah. It, that, it's a very serious and growing issue around privacy and, and that sort of data. Right. And I think, uh, you know, these cell phone companies obviously make you sign a contract. And I believe that in that contract, there is that stipulation that you should know that if you have your Wi-Fi on or your Bluetooth on, uh, there might be a chance that there's or if you have any kind of GPS function with your phone when you're using Google Maps or or mm -hmm. Apple Maps or whatever maps. Uh, you know, you're you're sending out a signal that's going out to the world that says this phone, not not necessarily the phone number, but this the serial number of the phone is at this location, and then it can track that location. So you're right. It's I don't think anybody really knows this is happening, but I think we all feel like, you know, whenever we've said this to people, they all kind of nod their heads and say, yeah, I understand that. The sure. phone is being tracked, and we always we always try to say these these companies don't know your name necessarily, but um, but but that's another issue, right? I mean, maybe they don't know your name, but they do. Yeah, <laughs> yeah they do. They right. do. Okay, thank you. I appreciate that. Great, thanks, Courtney. I think you're next. I'm good, thank you. Awesome, thanks, Courtney. Nothing additional for me. I don't think I miss anybody. I don't think David's here today. Uh, all right. Um, why don't we jump back to uh, uh, Council Member Peck? Thank you, Neil. Um, I, I also want to make a, a point about some of that data that's being collected. Phil, correct me if I'm wrong, but did they not use part of that data for 119 to show the traffic that would be going down 119 from uh, the north as well as um, as well as Southwest Weld? Yes, that was the 30% number that we shared earlier was 30% of the traffic in 2040, I believe it is, will be, right now it's 25%. We we expect that to grow to 30% of traffic on the diagonal will be going to and from Southwest Weld County and Larimer County. So outside of Boulder County and you know, the other places we think of people traveling on that corridor. Oh, you did say the diagonal. Okay. And, and my frustration has always been with the... Uh, Peak service is that that data they said would not work uh, when we're looking at ridership for the north for the peak service northwest rail corridor. That was always a bit of frustration for me. 
But what I wanted to ask you as we move forward, we've all been watching RTD and the FISA account and, and the ridership and the numbers, et cetera, for years. I know that the virus has had an impact on revenues, but for Longmont, regardless of what we do, especially with our local transportation, um, RTD has always been using ridership numbers for, with us and we pay a lot of money. So I've been thinking as we move forward, what, depending upon what this new RTD director does, depending upon what they do with or the conversation goes for the local free buyout for our uh, local transportation with RTD. Um, at some point, and I'm coming to you as an advisory group, um, I was wondering if, if it would warrant going to council advising them to set up a task force to look at our own local transportation hub, uh, bringing in our businesses like uh, Smuckers and uh, um, our big businesses, all businesses, basically, the community to look at routes, other uh, transportation providers like VIA, um, the hub, the Brew Hop, Holly, Brew Hop Shuttle has wanted to expand as well as Xilinx has mentioned wanting to get a shuttle of their own. Uh, what would that look like in Longmont? Would it be worth us putting up a task force to study that, to see if in fact we can, without the big dollars we're giving to RTD, if we could do this study to see if it would uh, actually be something that Longmont should look at? And I don't want uh, an answer right now. I would like you to think about that, but we really don't know where RTD is going. And should be we should we be ready if in fact at some point we say we need to just get out of this district we just need to get out of this RTE district because they're not providing what we want and I'm speaking only of the uh, fast tracks part not of the um, base operations which would be regional so that is my thought for the day and I was wondering uh, we already had this group put together through LEDP. But since Advanced Longmont 2 went away and the virus, there has been no discussion or conversation around it. And I'm wondering if it would be worth uh, revisiting to see if, in fact, that would be something in the future. It would be a, a two or three year uh, project to get up and running anyway. So uh, at some point, if you want to think about that and think that that's a good idea and to come to, to council, and advise the task force to look at that. That would be appreciated. So that's it. Phil, any clarifying questions on that before we go forward? Clarifying questions from me or any questions for me? Clarifying questions from you uh, about that topic. Well, I just will just will preface uh, what Council Member Peck said with some ideas that uh, there's a there's a committee that's been put together, kind of state or uh, region region wide for the entire regional transportation district, that's looking at uh, kind of the revamp of RTD altogether. I mean, there, there's a lot of people who are saying this right now and not very happy with the way the local governments are treated as far as uh, you know a fairness issue. So uh, I think what Councilmember Peck is asking for is pretty pretty in line with what. Uh, we're doing already the, the governor commissioned, uh, a, well, has a commission that he commissioned, I guess, um, that uh, is looking at just kind of the, the inner workings of RTD and kind of how they look at funding and how they are organized. Uh, we've often talked about what's called a sub regional model where, you know, RTD could certainly be in charge of the regional connections, the longer distance pieces, but that each county would be responsible for their share of of dollars that they actually you know generate and so you know some of that generation would go into the regional piece and be more of that hub and spoke kind of uh, operation but a majority would go into the local local buses or the local transit and do what we want them to do because we know our cities and, and county better than rtd we we feel so i think that's already happening um I can send you more information on kind of what's going on with that and where that's at in the process. So that might give you some idea of kind of how that's tracking and what's going on. Um, but 
those are some things that I think we're doing right now. But I think Councilmember Peck brings up even more grassroots level. You know, there's some there's some transit services out there right now that would like to grow, and you know, with RTD in place, they're not really allowed to grow into the public sector. There's actually a state statute that says um, all public transit shall be provided by RTD, and they're only RTD can allow others to come in. We had to do that with the flex bus that came from Fort Collins. We actually had to get permission from RTD to let them come into the regional transportation district and provide service from Longmont to Boulder. And they can't pick up any passengers in between. They can't provide service between Longmont and Boulder because our GD already provides that. So there's a lot of nuances, a lot of flaws that are out there that we need to kind of work around. Um, so I'm sorry, that's a long answer to your clarifying question, but there's a lot going on. That's that's helpful there. It sounds to me like uh, there's a, a committee that's starting to do some initial studying uh, there, and uh, we'll hopefully learn more about that as well as um, I have no doubt we will hear from the the new GM from RTD before long and and uh, get a sense of 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 the new priorities. So it'll be a wild ride, I'm sure, in the months ahead. But thanks for the uh, the, the background context on that. Appreciate it. Uh, I do have one other thing. The RTD director Judy Lubau's position is open, so anyone that is interested in being the RTD director, uh, the Boulder County Commissioners will be appointing one. Um, because the the gentleman Austin did not get enough signatures uh, to be on the ballot, so there will be no ballot uh, question about an RTD director this fall. But they are going to pick that director soon, before the first week of November. So if you're interested, uh, please go out to the Boulder County Commissioner's website, and there will be applications out there to apply. Or if you know of anyone who would be interested. Wonderful, thank you. Okay, uh, next agenda item there, information on upcoming transportation related meetings. Are there any uh, transportation meetings on the radar? All right, well, if there are some that you know of in the future, just keep the group in the loop. Um, we'll try to let you know as they come, as they come up, so. Tyler, were you chiming in there? You're muted. I don't have any to update right now. Okay. Sounds good. Well, we have a, a few items for upcoming transport, uh, upcoming agendas there, including our equitable transportation roadmap, crash report, um, always important, countywide sales tax, neighborhood traffic mitigation. So we'll look forward to learning more about uh, uh, the details of the next agenda. Uh, any last item before we? Before we uh, consider it closed. All right, hearing none. Thank you, everybody. I appreciate all your good insight there. And we'll consider this uh, September transportation advisory meeting closed and you can enjoy the extra hour of your night. Thanks, everybody. I'll see you. Go, go, go Broncos. Go Broncos. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Good night. All right, good night, you guys. Night, everybody.